So I recently had a question um, by a friend on the YouTube channel here, um, which was basically the gist of it was why sometimes when you're repotting plants, do they have this weird mesh on the inside, like around the roots that doesn't really fall apart, but doesn't really like, what is it and why is it there? And at first I was like, I, I can't remember, I, like I, I feel like I should be remembering what this is, but I'm just struggling to remember or picture what she's talking about. And um, then all of a sudden I was laying in bed one night go, trying to go to sleep and bang, I thought I know exactly what she's talking about and I know exactly what it is. Um, they are these little jiffy pellets that they use to start some seedlings or cuttings. And they come, they're very compressed, and I will splice in a video of me in Home Depot showing this in just a minute. Um, they're very compressed, and they have this little mesh outside on them. So I'm going to go for now and splice that video in, and then I will be back in a minute to discuss what I do about them. Alrighty, I believe this is what is under discussion. They come in these little um, refills and they are pellets and they look like this and they have, when you water them, they expand and they grow and then this is just peat that's compressed and it expands when you wet it and they plant a seed and start or even a little start. But it has this little mesh coating around the outside to keep it from falling apart and that is supposed to be compostable and the roots are supposed to just flow right through it but a lot of times when you unpot this little mesh especially on the larger ones um, just doesn't dissolve very well and so it ends up looking like this inside of your pot so you'll have dirt all around it and but then when you go to repot there's this little mesh pocket that they're kind of encased in and um, yeah, it's really kind of frustrating. You can peel it off as best as you can. I usually just take and rip holes through it all whenever I see it and leave the rest um, to decompose, but um, it is definitely frustrating. All right, I'm gonna cut the clip off here at Home Depot um, for now and finish up at home. Alrighty, so um, I didn't buy any. I was very, very tempted to buy a box of them so that I could soak one and show you guys exactly what I do. When I find a plant that's been grown in one of these, but I just didn't want to spend $5 for something that I'm not going to use at all and that will totally waste. And so, because I really dislike the Jiffy pellets, I dislike the Jiffy pots, I dislike all of that. Um, they either stay together and don't fall apart when they're supposed to, like the Jiffy pellets do, or like the pots, they fall apart way before you want them to. And so, um, I used to grow quite a lot of things in them like 15 years ago when it was a new, exciting, I don't even know if it was new then, but it was new for me 15, 20 years ago. Um, and I was super excited and tried to grow a lot of stuff in them and I just have way better success with pots. So what I have done in lieu of buying those is I have made a pretend little toilet paper tube and I'm gonna show you what I do. So if you're repotting um, and if, you, if you've never had this experience, this will probably seem really weird and random and probably make no sense. But if you've um, come across this before, it, it hopefully will make sense. Um, and I wasn't sure whether to just respond to her. I don't like to use people's names in, in my videos, but I wasn't sure whether to respond to her 
um, privately. And then I thought, no, this is a question that I, the first time I saw it, I thought, what in the heck is going on? Why did they wrap a dryer lint sheet around this root ball and then plant it in a separate pot? Um, and so, but it's just the little jiffy pellets that they start them in, they expand, and there's some bigger ones that are about this big, then there's some smaller ones that, that make a little bit of a smaller core, and then once they get to a certain size, they just plant them, the whole thing, into a um, pot, mesh and all, which you saw from the video. So, we're going to pretend this little toilet paper roll is the expanded peat pellet, and you have pulled this out of a pot, a bigger pot, to repot, and all the other dirt fell away because the roots are still being confined by this little mesh pocket. Now, if they're being completely confined, you just tear it off and kind of peel it off, but most of the time, the roots are like kind of trying to come through just enough that if you peel this away it'll rip all of the roots off um, but not enough that the plant is really as healthy as it should be because it's having to work really hard to get through this mesh which it's supposed to be biodegradable and compostable and all of that and it is eventually but it really takes um, very very few plants can survive on that small of a root system you know until they get up um, the energy to bust through something like that. For larger plants, of course, they could easily bust through a, a little fine mesh um, like that. But for seedlings, which is what you're starting in these most of the time, um, it's difficult. So what I do is just tear it up as much as I can. So imagine this is filled with dirt and there are roots coming out of it so I can't just rip it and tear it over. So what I will do is get my fingers behind it or wherever and just pull holes in it. And um, if, you know, if I can tear a piece apart like this, now it'll still be attached because there's roots kind of coming through it. So it'll still be kind of attached, but it's, it's free to, to move a little bit more. And so I try and tear chunks of this apart and just leave them because they're, they're attached to the roots. You don't want to rip them off because that will rip your roots off. And, um, but you're just kind of opening it up so to speak so that it's not a capsule so just tear 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 which you can't tear like this that's why I was so tempted to buy a pellet so that I could actually show you guys what I mean but so it'll all be just kind of suspended you know still around your root ball just these little chunks and if you can tear them into smaller pieces if you can see there's three little roots going through this piece but there's none going through this piece we'll tear that piece off and then just leave the little the little piece that has a few roots growing through it attached if that makes sense and so that is what I do um, it seems to help a lot um, from from what I, I've tried planting them just without tearing it at all and they just don't like it. Um, I may get a lot of debate on this topic, but from my perspective, plants that are planted in those, especially succulents, are never as healthy as um, plants that are just planted in a regular pot um, without that restricted growth. Now, if you get a plant that is was planted in one of those, and so you unpot it and you see the little, the little capsule kind of that it that it's in and there aren't roots coming out of the outside then if then just take around the top there's you know where where they plant there's a hole just peel it off like a little banana peel and just peel the whole thing off and if there's only a few roots going through it peel it off it is worth damaging a few roots to give it that freedom and ability to just grow without having to penetrate through that mesh um, and it does depend on the plant. Some plants, uh, their roots just go through it much, much easier. Um, other plants really struggle a lot more. So if there are only a few roots going through it, I would totally pull it off um, all the way and, and tear those few little roots and not even worry about it because in the long run, it's going to be uh, much better to uh, damage a few roots than have them constrained by that mesh for a long period of time. Um, yeah, but if it is um, really, really permeating, if the roots are through really, really well and it doesn't, there's no problem, you can just leave it alone. There's there's no need to pull the mesh out, of course, but um, if, if 
if it looks like it's struggling, then I always try to at least tear it up and into sections so that the root ball is free and not confined into this little space so that it's kind of blah. And even though the all the pieces and parts are still hanging on, it, it has room to expand and grow and isn't um, held in this tiny little ball. Um, also, because they're made out of peat, um, that little ball is going to be the most likely to hold water and hold all of that moisture right smack next to your roots. So depending on what type of a plant it is, if it's a succulent or especially a mess seam, that it kind of needs to be removed um, because the peat, the little mesh holding that peat right around the base unless you're really careful and remember all the time that it's going to be there for the rest of its life and water accordingly, it's a good idea to remove them if possible, if you've seen them um, in your pots, it's it's a good idea to remove them. And that's not directed to the person that asked the question, that's just directed to, to everyone since I decided to make this video um, for everyone. I hope that helps. I hope it wasn't too confusing with the toilet paper tube and that all of that makes sense. Um, and yeah, that I, I, I hope that they they, they seem to be moving towards just plugs a lot more and they have the little plug trays and I like that a lot better because there isn't the mesh confining them that they go ahead and plant and the roots can just really expand um, even though they're still planted in peat most of the time. Um, peat actually can be really, really good for certain succulents in in a small quantity. You can't overwater in a tiny little plug very easily and so that's one of the reasons that peat works well. Um, for them, but then when we repot, we don't want to use it, obviously. All right, that's it for today. I hope you are all having a fantastic day, and happy growing!